Hello munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to a Munchie Talk. Today I am getting in personal and I hope you guys will enjoy today's video about what animals I do not wish to own and why. And the reason for that is because I don't really create a lot of videos about myself pretty much. I used to do that in the past and you guys have been seeing a lot of reviews lately and so I thought I would mix it up, maybe throw in some of my opinions and just letting you guys know these animals are from the top of my head. You guys have also asked me if I would ever own these animals and so this is just kind of answering the majority of weird questions pretty much. And these animals that I will mention don't really fit into my lifestyle and my rescue for that matter because I want to focus on my rescue and I want to focus on specific animals. So if anybody's confused it's just what I want. Me! always me but you guys were wondering and it's just kind of a fun little video to do so let's just jump right into it so today you might hear an animal that I mentioned that is currently in your care while I personally don't want to own the animal it's totally okay for you guys to own these animals there is no me saying you can't own these or there's no insulting really it's just why this animal I'm not interested in and or why not this animal because it will fit in to my lifestyle Emma Samson she actually mentioned she would not like to own axolotls at all. Just dealing with another tank would just be too much. Totally understand because <laughs> right now I'm currently feeling that way with my current tanks and my fish. But I have axolotls and so I'm not really offended. I like my little water dragons but of course not, not actual water dragons. Just I call them water dragons because they do look like little dragons in the water. Okay? But I like my axolotl. That is that. I am not offended if somebody else doesn't like an animal. Let's see what I don't really want to care for. And the first one is going to be leopard geckos. Reason why it's going to be the first one is because I've already announced my deep dark passion of hatred towards leopard geckos. I don't really find leopard geckos that fascinating. It's not really hatred and they were hissy little it's just I used to work at a pet store and I used to care for leopard geckos often like so often and there was this one batch that was just little hissy hissy little things and they hated me and they were like and it was, oh my gosh, it was just, I just, I didn't really like them. I did like two Leos, however, but for me, I just am not interested in taking care of a desert animal. So that's the first one. I much prefer African fat tail geckos just because I do like to take care of tropical things. I think tropical animals are pretty cool. So that falls into the category again of prefer this over this if it comes to a gecko. And much like the Leos, I also don't like bearded dragons and it does have have a lot to do with the setup again it's a desert animal I just don't really care for their personality too much I again raised some bearded dragons they end up being cool little critters but for me I just see bearded dragons sitting around not really doing much basking and just it's not really an animal that I'm interested in caring for but I can see the appeal to other people now next one is gonna be like a 360 it's not a reptile we're turning this around it's gonna be nice and fuzzy and cute and possibly adorable and everybody apparently wants to cuddle these creatures even though they don't really like to be held or cuddled too much it is the ferret the ferret I have friends with ferrets and they handle their ferrets very well their lifestyle caters to the ferrets but for my lifestyle no I have cats I have dogs I don't think it would be a good mix and they are high energy they are like toddlers ferrets I compare to toddlers even though you guys probably would think that would be kind of weird and or you guys are probably thinking oh yeah but she's right they are like little toddlers they require so much time and energy they require at least four hours outside of their cage a day yes they do sleep for 18 hours a day but they still need that exercise and to get their energy out and to eat and they also do smell even though their scent glands have been removed uh, especially if you get martial ferrets and so they do stink because of their diet so that's a another thing. They can be litter box trained. However, you have to kind of work at it. Uh, they can just have accidents wherever and whenever and their poop is kind of, I wouldn't say it's liquidy, but it is very soft. So it's kind of easy to get that messy, especially if they step in it and then they just track it around. They are a mess, but they are very entertaining. And I do know Emzotic loves little ferrets, but for me, just with my lifestyle, they are a no-go. Now we're doing another 360. I know this is not in any sort of order. However, the one that I don't want the most will be posted last at the end of this video so you get to see who I don't really want to have ever. I have a very high no interest for this specific animal. But the next one is going to be a farm animal and it's a miniature 
pig. Yes, I'm tackling the big farm animals. Well, it's not really big, it's miniature. But I'm tackling the farm animals here because a lot of people, when they see something cute online, if they see it enough and or if they see a lot of people doing cute things, photo shoots with it, they want it, they want it, they want it. So I'm including it in this video, miniature pigs. I've never actually thought about owning a miniature pig. Well, actually, that's not true. Oh my God, that's not true. I just, I just had a brain fart. <laughs> At one point in my life, I'm like, hey, if I were to get a pig, maybe it'd be a miniature pig, but I have no interest in pigs at all. We have recently moved to a bigger land and there's a potential of having farm animals. However, I do not want to have any farm animals at this time other than what is currently here right now. But for miniature pigs, it's their care. You can house them indoors and outdoors. I've seen a lot of people want to house them indoors just because they treat them kind of like a dog where they let them in. They don't want them to be out. They do grow a little bit. They're not, you know, as big as like a pot belly pig or any other farm pigs or meat pigs. It's like if you really want a miniature pig, you are committed to the piggies. And that just takes a lot of time, I think. So doesn't fit my lifestyle at all to have a miniature pig. Now let's dive deep into the ocean because next is a fishies. I am talking like an idiot. <laughs> yes, we're getting into saltwater tanks. I have no interest in having another fish tank. Just no. I think I'm done with fish. Just for now, there has been times when I've wanted a specific fish that I want to take care of, but at this time, I am investing my time elsewhere. I don't want to do maintenance on tanks anymore. And salt water, oh my gosh, it's just so much responsibility. If one little thing like the water quality dips or dives, pH levels, it, you really can just have a lot of die off. And if you do the wrong thing, oh, it's just, it's catastrophic. My friend had a salt water tank and unfortunately she destroyed it on accident. I think it was an accident if I remember correctly. It was an accident. She was crying. She just, she loved that tank. She loved her fish in it and it just ended up being a, a total disaster. So high maintenance is salt water tanks, which I do not want to dive into at all. Never. No. Maybe I should have put this one up a little bit further on my list of things I'm really not interested in. But yeah, this is one of the things I'm really not interested in. And we do have on the list freshwater tanks as well. And this is excluding betas because currently right now I do have betas and I am interested in owning betas in the future future. However, like I said before, I am slowly phasing myself out of fish currently right now and focusing on the rescue, but just the maintenance, just purchasing stuff, just doing water changes all the time. That is getting very repetitive. I'm injuring my back. Apparently I have a bad back. What, what is up with me? People say I'm too young to have all these pains and problems, but yeah, apparently I have a really bad back. And so I am not wanting to do any more water changes. So right now I currently have three tanks set up and that is all but I do still want to have axolotls. That's the thing. I'm just I'm having such a hard time. It's like, do I want axes in the future or do I just want to not take care of anything water related? Oh, and besides just any sort of community fish or any sort of freshwater fish, everything can and will go wrong. Fish are so fragile. Bugs. <sighs> I had them as a kid, just outside bugs. I collected them and put them in jars and gave them all the things I thought they needed and took care of them. And that was my childhood. That was my joy. It's kind of like a kid's journey in life. And unfortunately, I have no interest in bugs anymore. I'm not a kid anymore, but there's adults that have bugs and they're interesting. And I want to say one of the bugs that I find fascinating are praying mantises. And then there was this other bug that I discovered at a pet expo, reptile expo here in Washington. And I forgot what they're called, but they're so cool. And we got to have them on our hands and they kind of moved with us and pretended like they were leaves. Oh, it was so cool, but I would not personally want to take care of a bug. Aquatic turtles. I don't know what it is about the appeal of aquatic turtles, but for me, it's just not a thing, never been interested. Their care is a lot different and their care is aquatic care. And so you have to get specific pumps, specific tubs. You gotta make sure that they're okay in the winter time. If you have them in ponds, it can be a lot. It's not something I'm interested in. And so therefore I do not ever want an aquatic turtle. Scorpions, I don't know why I'm more terrified of them than I am a tarantula, but I don't want a scorpion. 
it ever. Oh my gosh. I know Tyler actually has scorpions and has scorpion babies, but for me, that is not the pet I want. It's a really cool pet for some people. Just for me, I do not want to take care of a scorpion. Tarantulas. I don't have any resentment towards tarantulas. I've actually attempted to take care of one at my pet store, but then it quickly got bought. And so we didn't get any more tarantulas in after that, during my time that is. And so I don't really have an opinion about tarantulas, but I am not interested in owning a tarantula right now or ever. Yeah, ever. No, I'm not interested in owning a spider. I like animals that I can interact with. Yes, you can still interact with a tarantula. However, they do just have basic needs and or sensitive needs just because when they're molting, you gotta not touch them. They're very fragile. They'll lay on their backs until they're done. It is kind of time consuming. And then, you know, the waiting process. Uh, okay, what you doing now? Okay, you're in, you're in your little cave area. Okay, that's where you like. Okay, you never come out. Okay, but I do watch some spider channels. So I am still learning and kind of interacting with tarantulas and spiders, but just through other people. Now, this is a really hot debate, but nobody really talks about this. I don't think anybody really mentions this, but munchkin cats. It's kind of like the whole pug situation where you're breeding a disability, and I do not like this because it poses health risks. And so when the munchkin cat was discovered, I want to say, was it a decade ago? Uh, anyways, and they were breeding munchkin cats. I just found that to be so cruel, especially since people were saying, uh, especially veterinarians were saying all the disabilities, all the disadvantages, all of the health problems down the line. Why would you do that? It's just like flat face rabbits. People are breeding flat face rabbits, but it's causing so much problems for them, like tooth abscesses, uh, sores. It just, they have so many problems with their mouth when they're flat faced and it really causes them harm. Like why would you, why would you purposefully breed this disability when it causes the animal who has to suffer for it. I mean, it's just, they have no control. They are born. They're like, why is my face flat? Oh my gosh, this sucks. Oh man, ow, I'm in pain. I'm not feeling right. I can't chew my food. Help me, human, help me understand that my flat face is causing this. Please take me to a vet. It is, it is so sad. So munchkin cats for me, I feel like it's cruel. If I were to say adopt a cat that did have a disability like that, because there's lots of disability cats in shelters, if I adopted a cat and it turns out to be a munchkin cat, that is the only exception to me. I don't want to personally go out there, go to a breeder, or go to somebody that's like purposefully breeding them because I feel like it's wrong. It is wrong. Oh, these poor animals. And they just will keep doing it because people think it's cute. So that's why I don't really like promoting it. And then when my friend tries to tag me in some munchkin cat videos online, I'm like, please don't. It makes me so mad. I mean, I, I love my friend, but she doesn't understand that there's reasons why I don't like this. Also, it's just it's just the cute trend. Breeding animals because they're cute and then they continue to do it because it constantly is being talked about and or being shared via media, via social media, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. It's just, it's a really deadly trend in my opinion if you're not responsible enough to have self-control and to understand their needs before getting one. All right, we're touching on the puppers now. I don't really like designer dogs too much. So that includes poodles, Yorkies, dorkies, kidding. I'm so kidding, I was gonna say doodles, but I said dorkies instead. Yorkies, dorkies, doodles, poodles, shih tzus, and Maltese. Any, any dog like that I don't really like. And they're one of the most overly bred dogs. If you guys have noticed, there's a lot of backyard breeders that breed these specific dogs because they're so desirable, because they're designer dogs. And so I just, I don't like it. I don't really like it. I didn't put chihuahuas in there just because I do have a part chihuahua puppy right now. And I do love her. She has her personality and she also has the personality of a chihuahua too. But but she's very unique and so I can't really be dissing on her but I ended up having her in my care and I was like yeah I love taking care of animals but I did not understand what I was getting into when it comes to a very small dog but now I do now I can take care of them but I like bigger dogs so that's why I'm talking about the small designer breeds and or just designer breeds because doodles oh my gosh if people don't understand their coats need attention constantly and if people are not providing that they mat very easy and it causes them stress and pain and problems.
problems. Oh, it's it's awful. So that's why I don't like the designer dogs just being in that cute factor and people constantly showing and pushing it out. I'm so glad groomers out there are like reaching out to owners and being like, hey, before you go and purchase this dog, please make sure you know you need to get them groomed regularly. So thank you groomers out there. It kind of sucks that you have to announce that to people because they just think it's cute, but you're trying your best to protect an animal and protect your future animal or future animals getting purchased from not having a horrible fate being dropped off at a shelter. Sugar gliders! I just, I'm not very interested in sugar gliders. Not at all. I haven't done any research. Also, I would assume I don't see them as often because they do like to be in their pouches. They do like to be in secure places. Um, but whenever I see them, I only see people trying to sell them and show them and then they have them on their hands. But most of the times I see people taking personal pictures of them when they're in pouches and I don't really see them out and about exploring. So to me, I don't see an interest in sugar gliders. I know that there's people online who have sugar gliders, but I don't really follow a lot of people that have sugar gliders. Oh, iguanas, oh my God. Okay, iguanas, Petco, stop selling them. They are terrible pets. There are people who are designed to have these animals, but Petco should not be willingly selling these animals. They have the biggest needs if you accidentally get a male, if you didn't want a male, if you don't know. They get very testy and they get very cranky when they're at a specific age. They are very interesting pets, but they need a lot. And these companies sell these animals and they don't have adult size enclosures for them. Hey, we're just gonna sell this animal. Here is what you kinda need for it right now because it's a baby, but oh man, we don't have anything for you once it gets big. Yeah, you have to do everything yourself. So good luck. You have to have a custom enclosure. You gotta have uh, a lot of climbing areas. Uh, iguanas, especially males, they live up on the canopy and so they are overlooking the floor, the whole area. And so to think that we just keep them in really small enclosures, it, it, it just kind of sucks. And of course they are invading Florida because of the pet trade. And so it's just a really bad animal in general. I have had some luck with iguanas in the past before, but the majority of iguanas have always kind of whipped me with their tails whenever I try to interact with them. And I just, I don't see them as a really good pet to have. And also they don't like being picked up because if they get picked up, they think they're getting picked up by prey animals. So you have to let them come to you. If you have a really great bond with them and they trust you, they will come to you. They can lay on you, but you should not be really picking them up ever. And that's the mistake a lot of people, especially beginners make. And and they get scared and they don't know what to do. And they're like, man, I can't tame this animal. It's an advanced animal. Please understand before getting iguanas. Don't want anything to do with iguanas. Too much time, investment, money, space, all of that. Wolf hybrids. <sighs> I don't like the fact that there are people that are breeding them and selling them. I, I mostly backyard breeders, breeding them and selling them to people who are not qualified to have them and or they end up getting the poor animal killed and or put down because this animal has such a high prey drive that, oh my gosh, I got a wolf hybrid and I have a farm and it keeps attacking my livestock. I wonder why it's a wolf hybrid. If you are not dedicated to that animal, then that is on you. But of course the animal is to blame for your mistakes of getting a wolf hybrid. And so this animal is for specific people only and very very intelligent people only <laughs> because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to mess it up. So they need a lot of time and they need a lot of space and money. They need advanced people who know what they're doing. Lots of space. Don't think they're meant to be as pets. My animals come first. So of course my living situations and no, and I don't have any experience with them. So of course I am not interested in wolf hybrids at all. And now the moment of truth, the number one animal I do never, ever, ever wish to own the drives me absolutely nuts and or I do like some of them, well percentage, but the number one animal I will never own is a bird. I have thought about it, I am not interested, and here are the reasons why. I had to write this down because I probably would forget some things, but I don't want any type of bird that be parakeet, conures, cockatiels, zebra finches, macaws, African greys, you name it, because uh, they live a very long time, especially for the bigger birds. Birds form a bond with you, so you really need to be dedicated to them. And some birds prefer a specific gender where they will not get along with like a guy in the house, but they will love the females or they will love the guys, hate the females. And a lot of the times when I do see birds get rehomed, it is for that reason of, oh, they only like my wife or they only like me and they don't let the kids interact. And 
it, it becomes a problem because that bird's bonded to a specific gender and or to a specific person. They have preferences. They are picky. Birds are picky. Oh my gosh, birds are so picky. They have such a picky personality, but they are very fun to watch for those of you who do have birds as pets. For me personally, I would never have a bird as a pet because of my living situation and for these other reasons too. They are needy. Okay, so that falls into like being picky, but yeah, they are needy animals. They're loud depending on the species and a lot of people don't understand that, oh, sun conures, they are so loud. Somebody actually was returning a sun conure uh, at the time of checkout to a pet store and so they were saying that, oh, I thought I could keep this in my apartment, but it turns out my neighbors could hear it all day and they complained to management and management told me to get rid of it. Uh, people need to understand the bird's needs and know about it and know about your living situation. Get, get a smaller bird then. Get one that doesn't create such huge range of vocals. Like my goodness, it just, it's such a piercing scream sometimes. They're loud, their care is a lot to handle. Bird diseases do worry me a little bit just because I am following several bird channels on YouTube because I do like to get knowledge of birds because they're not my species, but it's fun to see other people and how they raise their birds. And there has been some bird deaths in the community, the pet community on YouTube, and a lot of them had to do with diseases. And it really worries me because you won't know anything until it just kind of hits you in the face and like too late. I don't worry about bird diseases transferring to humans. I worry about the bird diseases themselves, just like how I worry about my female Syrian hamsters when they're not spayed because they seem to produce a lot of tumors versus males, which males don't really produce a lot of tumors, but I'm noticing in my rescue that there is a lot of females with tumors that develop later in life and or develop very quickly if they are not spayed or neutered. It, it, it's just it's just one of those things where you're like, oh, this is very daunting. What if this happens? What if I only get like one year with this bird when this bird's supposed to live like 20, 30 years? Bird diseases do worry me. Also, the bird trade. Where are the birds taken from? Are they bred in captivity or are they imported from another country? It is very scary because a lot of the times when you see birds being passed around, rehomed, things like that, you don't know where they're coming from unless you go to a specific breeder. And even then, sometimes specific breeders may in fact lie. It's very hard to trust people and I don't really want to support the bird trade because of all the cruel things I see. Also, for whatever reason, in Washington State, there is a lot of places around here who have macaws in their pet store and they are on little tiny perches which they never leave, never. And their beaks are so long and sharp and they're not being well taken care of, yet they're in a pet store where you would think logically, oh, this should be like the best place for it, right? Because it's an pet store with all of its needs. No, oh my gosh, it's very upsetting that these pet stores willingly display these animals and they don't provide it proper care and or proper vet care. And you can tell that they're getting stressed, they don't want to be around people. So that's why I like watching bird people because they do have the enclosures, they do have the outside space, and they do let their birds experience being birds. That's what I don't like when I see pet stores having birds in there, but I like like to promote healthy husbandry and I like to promote knowledge to you guys. So hopefully you guys can maybe gain a little bit of knowledge for this video of what I personally don't want as a pet, but it's okay if you guys have them. So thanks guys for watching. If you did like the video, hit like to show support. Comment down below with your animal that you do not wish to ever own, but still respect. And if you're new here and would like to see more from me, subscribe and become part of my Munchkin family and just join in on the conversation. So thank you guys so much today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!